Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you. PM Modi talks tough on terrorism at SEO meet with Pakistan PM in attendance. U.S. condemns vandalism at Indian Consulate in San Francisco. And rising inflation, unemployment worry locals in Pakistan's Karachi. And now for all the details. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi virtually addressing the leaders of SCO, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, on Tuesday said that some countries are providing shelter to terrorists and using cross-border terrorism as a tool. He said SCO should not hesitate to criticize such countries. The stern remarks came as Pakistan's PM Shehbaz Sharif looked on with Chinese President Xi Jinping and Russia's Vladimir Putin also in attendance. Apart from boosting regional cooperation, the leaders of the grouping also agreed to jointly help Afghanistan and tackle global challenges such as food, fuel and fertilizer shortages. Kuch desh cross border terrorism ko apni neetiyon ke instrument ke rup mein istemal karte hain, atankwadiyon ko panah dete hain, SCO ko aise deshon ki alochna mein कोई संकोच नहीं करना चाहिए। India, which holds the presidency of SCO and the G20 this year, has walked a diplomatic tightrope as relations between Western nations and a Russia-China partnership have been fraught due to Moscow's invasion of Ukraine last year and Beijing's growing assertive presence in the global geopolitical theatre. The U.S. State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller has condemned the vandalism against the Indian consulate in San Francisco after a report of a protest at the mission by supporters of Khalistan, a separate state for the Sikh community. The separatists tried to set fire to the consulate on the weekend, though there was no major damage and police were investigating. Meanwhile, India also reportedly summoned the Canadian High Commissioner to express strong protest after Khalistani threat posters in Canada featured names of Indian diplomats. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar earlier said that giving space to Khalistan sympathizers can affect ties with partner countries. Well, in a big relief to Pakistan's former Prime Minister and PTI party chief Imran Khan, the Islamabad High Court on Tuesday declared the Tosha Khanna case inadmissible and approved his bail application. Khan was accused of misusing his 2018 to 2022 premiership to buy and sell gifts in state possession that were received during visits abroad worth more than $635,000. The PDI chief and his party have faced a countrywide crackdown after the violence that followed his arrest in another corruption case. Hundreds of supporters and dozens of leaders have been detained and many have left his party. Meanwhile, the constant onslaught of inflationary pressure has brought many to the brink of poverty in Pakistan with unemployment on the rise. A report. Residents in Pakistan's Karachi city have blamed rampant corruption and failed government policies for the ongoing economic crisis that has led to slowdown in economic activity and subsequent rise in unemployment. Persistently high inflation has put severe strain on the South Asian country's economy, which is reeling from falling foreign exchange reserves and a widening current account deficit. The situation has shattered the people's faith in the government to eradicate poverty and create jobs and they feel the rulers are only doing lip service. The rozgari ho gayi hai aur karobar hai nahi aur har aadmi pareshan ho gaya hai aur tension aur mushkilein badhti chali ja rahi hain. Pakistan to ab yun samjhe ki gareeb jo hai gareeb tar hota ja raha hai aur jo middle class tabka tha wo bhi jo hai ab roadon pe aa raha hai. बेरोजगारी बढ़ रही है तनख्वाहें टाइम पे नहीं मिलती जो रोजगार से लगे हुए उनको तनख्वाहें टाइम पे नहीं मिल रही इंडस्ट्री पूरी तबाह हो गई है हर इदारा जो है वो कह रहा है कि हमारे पास पैसे नहीं है मुलाजमीन को फारिग किया जा रहा है Pakistan clinched an IMF loan of $3 billion last week, but citizens fear the measures to meet conditions before a review by the global lender will further add to their woes. 
and the United Nations on Monday released its strategic framework for Afghanistan for the period 2023 to 2025, outlining the world body's approach to address basic human needs in the country. The UN mission in Afghanistan in a statement said that the framework prioritizes the needs and rights of those most vulnerable, including women and girls, internally displaced persons and ethnic and religious minorities. The ban on Afghan women working for the UN is in addition to earlier restrictions imposed on Afghan women and girls by the de facto Taliban authorities. The move has added to the dire humanitarian crisis in the country. And Sri Lanka's tourism sector has managed to earn an income of $131 million in the month of May this year, indicating signs of recovery. The central bank in a report stated the country's income from tourism last May was $44 million with 30,207 foreign tourists visiting the country. The tourist arrivals amounted to 83,309 in May 2023. The island nation's reserves had slumped in the past two years as tax cuts and the COVID-19 pandemic badly hurt its tourism-dependent economy. Officials say Sri Lankan economy is gradually recovering with better reforms and recent IMF funding. And devout Hindus in India on Tuesday took holy dips and offered prayers to mark the beginning of the auspicious month of Shravan dedicated to Lord Shiva. Take a look. Devotees across India took holy dips and offered prayers to Lord Shiva, the Hindu god of destruction, on Tuesday as they marked the beginning of the auspicious monsoon month of Shravan. In northern Varanasi city, devotees bathed in holy Ganga river, while in central Ujjain city, priests performed Bhasma Arti, the holy ritual with ashes. As per the Hindu lunar calendar, Shravan is the fifth holy month and is associated with Lord Shiva. It is believed that praying to him during this period helps bring luck and prosperity to the devotees. Smarti me aaye do ghante kaise pandikal gaye pata nahi chala saavan ka pehla din tha. Bahut hi achhi anubhuti hui, bahut acha laga. Shivji ki aisi kripa sab pe bani rahe. Meanwhile, devotees also paid obeisance at temples in Ayodhya city and offered milk, water, flowers to idols of Lord Shiva to seek his blessings. In a rare incident this year, Shravan will last for two months, reports suggest. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see the same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.